The Lord be with you. Thank you and welcome to worship this morning. A few announcements as we begin our worship service. I want to thank our chancel choir director, Kevin Podworski, for moonlighting as our guest organist this morning. So <laughs> thank you to Kevin. I also want to let you know that faith formation for all ages began today between worship services and also beginning today is our Sunday lunch after our 1030 worship service and everyone is welcome to go down and grab lunch. There's more information in your um, announcement page that is green this morning um, about um, what kind of lunch that will be. There's other things that are happening. The Can Ministry meeting is happening, Compassion in Action with our neighbors. Um, meeting. So uh, just take a peek. And if you have any questions, ask one of us and we're happy to answer those questions for you. Um, additionally, one last thing to highlight, Rainbow Trail Lutheran Camp's Grace Race is coming up, I believe on the 2nd of October. And um, all proceeds go to ELCA World Hunger. So what this means is whether you walk or whether you run or whether you don't do either of those things, ELCA World Hunger still benefits. So I um, would invite you to consider um, lifting up World Hunger in your giving uh, this month as the Grace Race takes place in a couple weeks. And now I invite you to stand as we begin worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
We pray together. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson appointed for this day is taken from the 11th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning at the 18th verse. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And this is the word of the Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite the children forward to come spend a few minutes with me. up here. Today, if you were listening to the story, I hope that you heard that Jesus welcomed the children. Do you guys have a way that you like to be greeted or welcome people when you see them? How do you like to say hello? Griffin? You like to wave and say hello? Does anyone else have anything special they do when they see someone? He likes to give hugs. Arlo, does anyone else like to give hugs when you see someone you're greeting? Does anyone ever give a high five? Huh? Is there something you guys ever do that's kind of silly to say welcome? What's that? 
Do you think silly words, Griffin? You're a little silly sometimes? It's fun to be silly when you welcome someone. I have this memory when I was maybe in like second grade, I was in a school play, and my job was to welcome every character by doing a big arm wave every time someone would walk in. So probably for a good two years after that, every time I saw someone, I would do the big arm wave to say my welcome. It became my signature for a while. But you know what we learn about God's signature is that he welcomes everyone. Jesus welcomed the children and all of us. You're welcome here. And you're also welcome at faith formation, and you're welcome here because Jesus loves you. And so have any of you, have you guys gotten your wavy flags for today? I have extras if you didn't get them, but we just want to let you know that you're welcome here and to remind you that we want your presence and that during songs you can wave them to show your joy and excitement for being a loved child of God. So why don't you guys, if you have them, while we're praying, you can feel free to wave them, but will you repeat after me? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for love. Thank you for learning. And thank you for the gift of faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up. And again, if you need one, you can grab one before you head back to your seats. a few more getting settled there, getting settled. During the children's sermon on Labor Day, I asked the kids what they thought their job was as children. One courageous young friend said, play, and play was a great answer. We tend to think of playing as a children's thing. Play is imagination, curiosity, happiness, and often energy lumped into an experience that doesn't have to have a goal. Play is just play. Another thing kids do is ask questions, sometimes as if it's their job. So many questions. Why questions seem to be a fan favorite of the curious child? Why this and why that launch out at a rapid pace across all kinds of topics? Being at the receiving end of those kinds of questions is awesome until something else needs to get done. Then it's difficult to end that stream of questions. There are times, though, when a well-placed question makes all the difference. Take Jesus' question in the reading today when he asks his disciples, what were you arguing about on the way? The disciples had been arguing on their way to Capernaum, it's kind of curious that Jesus didn't interrupt their argument on their long walk. Maybe he was waiting for the right moment or perhaps letting them, letting them get it out of their system. It's even more curious that the disciples didn't understand Jesus' teaching about his betrayal, death, and rising again, and they were afraid to ask him a question about it. Or maybe it's not that hard to understand their fear. The last time Jesus taught about his death, Peter's misguided speech to Jesus went very poorly. So poorly that Jesus told Peter to get behind him and called him Satan. And that couldn't have made it easy for the disciples to get their courage on to ask a question. Although it might have gone better for Peter if he had asked a question instead of debating Jesus. Regardless, here we are again, Jesus once again teaching about his death and resurrection. The disciples did not get it, and not only that, they were afraid to ask the question about it. It's not clear that a Q&A would have addressed their questions. Jesus' actual death and resurrection is hard to fathom after the fact. 
His disciples didn't stand much chance of figuring it out ahead of time, and Jesus probably knew this too. So he put a child among them and held that child while he taught them. Most of us need some kind of example to learn, and the disciples were no different. Children in the first century had no standing, zero standing in the community, no status whatsoever. And for Jesus to acknowledge a child in his presence, much less use one as an example, was earth shattering in a way that's kind of difficult for our 21st century types to comprehend. And so to take a child with no standing and stand the child among them upended the disciples' very well-ordered world. Hierarchy is what they understood to be true. There's a high level to the hierarchy and a low level to the hierarchy and all the levels in between. And being at the top of the hierarchy meant being the greatest. And being the greatest was apparently the goal. Hence the disciples' argument. If they couldn't understand Jesus' teaching and were afraid to ask, maybe they could compensate by being at the top of the heap, the greatest of all time. It's neither hard to see the timelessness of Jesus' teaching to be the last and the least, nor is it hard to see how the world would be a better place with a scooch more humility. It's just hard applying Jesus' teaching to our own lives and maybe harder to apply it to our children's lives. When have you ever coached a child to be last as a life goal? When have you encouraged a friend to be a servant? When have you yourself decided to live into and through your most recent humiliation to find a lesson from that heartache? Last week, Pastor Ann preached Jesus' challenge for us to be bearers of the cross rather than defenders of the cross. There are more than enough folks ready to battle it out, come out swinging and defending their truth at any cost and against everyone else's humanity. And this week, Jesus continues to challenge us to be cross bearers to be transformed through the servanthood into Christ-shaped disciples, willing to be last of all and servant of all in obedience to the one we follow. Or to summarize the James reading, do your works with gentleness born of wisdom from above. In these verses today, James continues to encourage a church struggling to be the church in a society that threatens to overwhelm its faith and obedience. Warnings against partiality and hypocrisy and also his encouragement towards mercy and peacemaking are themes we can wind together with Jesus' actions in the Gospel of Mark. What does gentleness born of wisdom look like? It looks like Jesus holding a child in front of his disciples after they've argued about greatness. What does peacemaking look like? It looks like Jesus standing firm about servanthood being the greatest of all. What does mercy look like? It looks like Jesus rejecting human violence, dying on a cross, and rising again in love, not vengeance. So what is gentleness born of wisdom? What could that look like for us? Perhaps it looks like figuring out how to welcome someone with no social standing into a conversation at church, at school, at work, or in your neighborhood. What does peacemaking look like for us? Perhaps it looks like serving those people who we deeply believe do not deserve to be helped or maybe even think that they're beyond help. And what is mercy? What does mercy look like for us? Perhaps it looks like rejecting violence and vengeance as cross bearers in our families and in our communities, and at the very least, at the bare minimum, not celebrating when someone we disagree with tumbles off their pedestal in public disgrace. 
Our world right now, our world needs the church to be the body of Christ in the way that Christ asks us to do it. With Christ who lives in us and shows us a different way to move through the world. To do this, we may have to take ourselves just a scooch less seriously and be a little more playful. Play as a theological posture fuels our curiosity and imagination, just like play does for our youngest siblings in Christ who come up for children's sermons. A thousand years ago, Anselm of Canterbury encouraged us as the church towards faith-seeking understanding. His encouragement reminds us that it's not our thoughts about Jesus that save us. It's not what we think about Jesus. Jesus, who died on a cross and lives again, is the one who saves us. One thing that the cross means is there is nothing you can do or not do to make God love you any more or any less. God's love in Jesus frees us to be a courageous church, a church with the courage to ask questions. So we can ask why. And if you'd like to be a little bit more Luthery about it, you can ask, what does this mean? Questions are important to faith, and one way the church figure out, figures out our obedience to Christ. Jesus was the one in the Bible reading who asked a question. It wasn't that the disciples didn't have questions to ask Jesus. They were just too afraid to ask them. So don't be like those disciples. Be like Jesus, the one who inspires us to love by loving us first. Amen.
be seated. And I invite uh, Pastor Caitlin and Deacon Shanna to join up here. We invite those that are receiving their Bibles today to come on forward with their families. We give thanks to our children and young people marking another milestone in their faith journey today. And as you come up, you'll see there's a sticky note on the outside of your Bible with your name on it so you know where to stand. When you were baptized, your parents promised to place in your hands the Holy Scriptures. On that same day, this or another congregation promised to help your parents fulfill that promise. Today, we join together in taking this important step toward fulfilling these promises. The Bible has many stories about people of faith, and it also tells about Jesus' life, ministry, and love for all people, including you. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says... You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your homes and gates. And Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As a parent, you are the primary faith teacher for your child. And as a congregation, we have pledged to support you in this effort. Today, we gather in thankfulness to ask God's blessing upon these children, your families, and the scripture being placed in their hands. Parents, please take the Bible and place it in your child's hands. Then please place your hands on your child for a blessing. Lord, be with us now and bless all those who gather as we dedicate these Bibles to your glory and praise. Give us faith to be open to discovering your gracious purpose for our lives. Give us joy in the reading of your word and bless these children and their families. Please join me as we pray together. We give you thanks, Lord, for the gift of your word, for the life of each child here, and for the caring adults that nurture them. Give them insight and wisdom as they share the good news of your love in Jesus Christ. Help us as a community to be a place that nurtures faith in people of all ages. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations on taking this uh, step in your faith milestone and read those stories and find out about how much God loves you. You can go back to your seats now. God, we give you thanks, and with our whole hearts we sing your praise. United as one in the body of Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's people. Today, as we celebrate with the kindergarten through third grade children who are receiving them by their Bibles, give them a thirst for your word so that they may continue to grow and live the gospel in our world. Lord, in your mercy, as our world continues to battle COVID, we pray that you would help us to keep the focus on caring for all other humans by following the best scientific and medical guidance to keep others and ourselves safe and to slow the spread of this virus. Lord, in your mercy. 
Jesus, you healed the sick and gave new hope to the hopeless. We pray that you will mend the wounds, soothe the sick, and make whole the broken. Today we lift up E, Pat, Jeff, Linda, and those who we name in the silence of our hearts. We pray for the consolation of the family and friends of Joni Hargrave. Bring them your peace and comfort as they mourn her loss. Lord, in your mercy. We ask your help for us to live out of your wisdom, which is pure, peace-loving, considerate, full of mercy, and bears good fr fruit. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us, unite them with the offering of our lives. 
lives to nourish the world loved you dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the We praise you all, holy God, our maker, redeemer, and keeper, for the universe beyond our knowing, for land and water and all their creatures, and for friends, strangers, and family, homes, workplaces, and schools. We praise you for your covenant people, for Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam. We praise you for faithful people, Mary, Peter, and Paul, and for those who mentor us in faith. We praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, who redeems us and offers us life and love, who in the night before he died took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray for your Holy Spirit. Inspire us to give and to serve and renew the world with your mercy, with your healing, your justice, your peace. We praise you, loving God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into be seated. This table belongs to Christ, and here Christ invites all of us, all of us, to be a part of this meal. You are welcome to receive communion today. Here in the sanctuary, you'll be invited to come down the main aisle. You'll receive a wafer and then move to the side to receive the wine or grape juice. The small glass can be deposited in the basket that you'll see there as you return to your seat. If you are streaming and are joining us on worship in live stream today, we invite you to receive this meal with bread or crackers, juice or wine, and the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Together we sing the Lamb of God.
please stand as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder that the children's music program does begin again today as well, following lunch downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. The children are invited to be part of the music and choir program here at Augustana. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. in peace. The living word dwells in you. Amen.